So over the last few months, Apple's released both iOS 26 and iOS 26.1 to the entire public, with the big headlining features being the customizations, liquid glass, even the new multitasking windows that we got on the iPad OS side. But there are hundreds of new features that are under the radar and under the hood of iOS 26 and 26.1 that Apple just hasn't really talked about that are way more beneficial than something as simple as liquid glass. So in this video, we're going to go over 20 of my favorite hidden features that I think most people should know about that you haven't heard of yet. Let's get into it. But now, before we continue, if you do enjoy videos like this one where we go over all things Apple, both software and hardware, consider subscribing to the channel. But let's get into the first piece, which is going to be in the Messages app. So now, before we get started, definitely comment down below your favorite iOS 26 or 26.1 feature that you've noticed on your iPhone. We can compare down in the comments below. But to get started, let's get into the Messages application. I am using my 17 Pro for this video, and I am running 26.2 beta, but we're going to be mostly talking about 26 and 26.1. The Messages app, for lack of a better term, has gotten very WhatsApp-like, right? For example, group chats have gotten a lot more friendly, there's a lot more substance when it comes to that, and there's a couple new features that came out with 26 that you should know about. The most important one, in my opinion, and the most useful has to be in here, in the polls section. So this allows you to create a poll if for some reason you're deciding something between a group chat setting. For example, I ended up using this the other day because me and a few friends are deciding where to go for a group kind of trip for a couple of days, and there's a couple options to choose from. We list out all the options here, and if we write them down, test one, go here, do test, you know, test one, two, you can just send that in, and then that becomes an option in the group chat itself, and then even you can vote yourself to see who's voting, and your little emoji or memoji, whatever Apple's calling it these days, will do that. So that's always good to know that polls is now available, and another new feature here is going to be in the background. So if we go in here, you can actually add a background depending on what you want to do. You can create one, you can use a photo, you have the color picker here, if we want to add the sky, we can do that, and it'll let you know what it looks like. We'll press that check mark, and now everybody in the group chat will see this background moving forward. So you can see that it's a little bit blurred out, but still nice to see that it's a new feature in the Messages application. Another great one that came with the update is going to be inside of Messages as well, and being able to partially select parts of a text. So for instance, before if I long pressed on here, I would have to just press copy, and it would copy the entire text. Now you can press select here, and select which portion of the text that you actually want to select. Do whatever you see fit, we can copy that part, go down here. We can paste it if we want to, and then it shows up there. So parts of the text will show up nice and easy. And you can see that this is going to be the third version of the new update in the iMessages app, which has to be the live translation. So you can see that up here, it's live translating in Spanish, this ingredient list. So if I press send here, you can also see that down here, it says translating in Spanish. So the person receiving this will also receive it in this format. You can see them receiving in the English format up here, but then also in Spanish down here. So it is live translated in real time. So messages app got a lot more robust with live translations, better customization, and the new polls feature, which is something that a lot of people just aren't really aware of. So the next new feature has to do with AirPods and the new convenience that it brought with iOS 26 and the AirPods Pro 2 and 3. So if I do connect my AirPods and I have them on right now, you're able to see that they do show up here. But now one of the cool things is that you can actually default to the AirPods microphone on the camera app itself. So if I go into the camera application, swipe down to your control center, tap on the little green mic icon, and then if I go to audio input, I can actually select Fernando's AirPods Pro, and now I'm using the microphone from my AirPods when I am recording. Not only that, but I can actually add voice isolation to make myself sound even better. So this is great if you're doing some run and gun shooting, if you need to do maybe a selfie video. So if I go into my video section here, now whatever video that I'm taking, I'm actually using the onboard microphone of my AirPods right here to get whatever I need to get done. So if I am somebody who's maybe like TikToking or doing selfie stuff, then I'm able to do this. The microphone on the AirPod is gonna be light years better than the microphone built into the iPhone, especially at a little bit of a distance. And the same thing will happen with plug-in microphones. So if I do grab my plug-in microphone, which is right here, as you can see, you can plug it in via USB-C. I have it plugged into my 16 Pro Max right now, right here. And I'm able to use the microphone, the Shure mic that's directly plugged in via USB-C to get what I need to get done. So that's also a nice little added bonus where the accessibility and the audio defaults are just much easier overall with iOS 26. And it's great for just a lot of different settings, whether it is a professional setting or something just for fun and personal. So one of the oldest tricks or shortcuts with iOS has been the quick access to the camera application from the lock screen. So if you lock your screen right here, 
then unlock it or at least tap into it. You can swipe to the right and then voila, you are on the screen itself using the camera shortcut. But it is very redundant, especially out of the box because if you have a new iPhone that not only has that, but then also has a camera control button on the side and then by default has a camera icon right here, which I've personally changed, that's three different ways to access the camera application without even needing to open the screen. So I've actually gotten rid of that by going into the settings, going down into the camera, by going into the settings, going to the camera, scrolling all the way down to where it says lock screen swipe to open camera, I like to turn that off because now if I do lock the screen and try to swipe to the right, that's not an option anymore and I can't accidentally do that. But I do have the quick access by clicking on the control button or the camera control button in order to access my camera quickly. So if I ever need to do that, I still have that option. And that's why I've also removed it from here. This one actually dims my iPhone even more so when I am using my iPhone at night, I'm trying to put one of my daughters to sleep. Another new addition that came in that has to do with liquid glass is going to be the toggle to change how much liquid glassiness we have. So we get out of here, go into display and brightness, you now have the liquid glass toggle. So here you have the option to go between clear and tinted. This is available on 26.1. So here it is a little bit more tinted. You see it's a little bit more blurry, a little bit more opaque. If you tap on here, it's more clear how Apple intended. But one new update that's actually coming out to 26.2 is if I go into my lock screen, scroll down, and I long press to customize that lock screen, we'll customize it. You tap onto the clock itself, you have the ability to change how liquid glassiness it is. So here it almost disappears as you can see here. So people might say from a readability standpoint, it's not gonna be good enough, but hey, you can change it to do whatever you see fit. And now we can only use this font to make the font bigger, for all the other fonts, this toggle or this slider will still work even though you can't make it bigger, which is still good to see. I wish the other fonts, I wish I was able to enlarge the clock as well with the other fonts, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. But as you can see, you can go as far all the way over to opaque or all the way over here to make it as clear as possible. As you can see here, it's almost barely visible. But as you can see, we're gonna keep it that way. We're gonna press done up here. And now that is gonna be my lock screen where you can barely see the time. So I never know what time it is. Another funny one is actually in the clock. So if we go into the clock, a couple changes happen to the alarm actually. So if we go into our alarm, let's click on any one of these. The first thing I'm gonna show off is gonna be the snooze duration. After pretty much 16 or 17 years of this not being able to be changed, you can finally go in here and change how long you go between each snooze. It has been at nine minutes for 15 or 16 years now at this point, but now you can go anywhere from one minute to 15 minutes. If you do one minute, I think you're a psycho. That means you don't need a snooze button. If you go 15 minutes, then why even set the alarm at that time? I always thought that nine minutes was a good little middle ground because it's not quite 10 minutes and you're still kind of on time maybe depending on who you are, but that is now a new function. And then the next thing that happened is gonna be a new alarm when it came to turning off the alarm. So if I wanna set an alarm for let's say 303, we'll kinda of let it do its thing. So you can see here, we now have the snooze button and then we also had slide to stop. Now, that's a brand new feature that came with iOS 26.1 and some people actually don't really like it because it requires almost too much consciousness to turn off your alarm, but you can actually turn this off if you want to and go back to the normal. So we go back to our settings, go into accessibility, then go down to where it says touch and then go down to where it says prefer single touch action. So you, if you tap that on, that means it's a single touch action, meaning you no longer will have to slide. You'll just tap it to either snooze it or tap it to turn it off. That's what's new with the new version of the alarm clock, which is nice to see an update that you know hasn't really been talked about in years. A couple more power user or background user ones that I wanna bring up. The first one's gonna go into battery life. I don't know if you might've noticed, but for some reason with the new version of iOS, when you go into low power mode or adaptive power mode, the experience of iOS seems to dwindle a little bit with some drop frames, things kind of slow down, especially in low power mode. But if you go into battery, it's all because of the new adaptive power and low battery mode, like I mentioned. As you can see here, this is my battery health, which is great to see, it's relatively new, but power mode here, you have a couple options here. You have adaptive power and then adaptive power notifications, and then you also have your low power mode. When your battery usage is higher than normal, iPhone can extend your battery life by making the performance adjustments such as lowering the display brightness, allowing some activities to take longer or turning the low power mode on at 20%. These are turned on for me right now. I do notice from time to time getting that adaptive power notification. You can go in here and turn it off if you want to to keep the smoothness up to par. But again, Apple is doing something in the background to help out battery life even just a little bit. So it's up to you if you think it's worth it or not but that is something brand new in iOS 26. And then another one is going to be also in the settings. If we go into settings, but then go to privacy and security, there's this new option down here called background security improvements. If you go on here, I like to keep this turned on because it allows you to install security patches and updates that are a little bit on the smaller side where it's not a major update. It allows you to install it in the background without actually ruining or changing or making you stopping using the actual iPhone. So background security improvements provide 
additional protection to your iPhone in between software updates. That's brand new. And it says here in rare instances of compatibility issues, these security improvements may be temporarily removed, then enhanced in the future software update. So again, this is just to allow you to install all security patches in the background without you really noticing. I like to keep that turned on. And I might have to do a whole other video on privacy and security because there's a lot that meets the eye there. So another big one that got an update is going to be the actual phone, right? Because again, we forget that these are smartphones. They're made to make phone calls first and foremost, but there's an abundance of new options when it comes to the phone application itself. So for instance, you now have the ability to type to Siri while you're on a call. So if you are on a call right now, you're having a conversation with somebody, you need to look something up, you can double tap on here, start to ask whatever you need to ask, get the question answered, and then go back to your phone call without being disturbed, which is a nice little trick. Another thing is in this more section, look at how robust this has gotten over the years, right? We have the call recording, so you're able to record this entire call if you want to. You can turn on live translations if you want to as well, and you have your hold assist, which is get notified when to pick up your phone again. So if you are on a customer service line or something of that nature, the hold assist will turn on, you press that button, and then it'll tell you, you'll be notified to pick up the call whenever you're ready, or you can just tap right back into it if you want to. See, it says, please enter your first 16 digit credit card number. We'll pick that up. And you can see that it's showing almost like an iMessage as you're going through the whole conversation. So the actual phone has gotten so much better over the years and people just aren't really giving it its time of day. Now you can actually have the auto hold assist turned on automatically in the settings application. So if we get out of here, let's end this. Let's go back into our settings, go to the phone. You have the option called hold assist detection. So it says automatically detect when you are placed on hold. So you can step away. iPhone will then notify you when to come back. So these are all nice to have in terms of all the features. The phone application and the phone settings has gotten just way more robust and I really like kind of the state that it's in right now because it's much more useful than it needs to be between live translations, the hold assist, and everything in between. And the last one is if we go back into our settings, go to the camera, there's a new smudge detection piece, which I think is a fun one. So we go here, go scroll down to where it says lens cleaning hits. It says displays a suggestion when the camera lens should be cleaned in order to improve the image quality. So if you know, you know, especially when it comes to grandparents or parents or anything like that, for some reason their pictures, even though they have the latest iPhone, always comes out kind of blurry and smudgy. It's because they probably got some grease on the back lens and this will help allow that not to happen. So those are all the things that I wanted to share. There's a bunch of other ones, so comment down below if you want to see some more. I have another 20 in my back pocket that I could share, but let's finish up this video. So out of all the features that we mentioned, which one is your favorite? Which one's your most used? Which one is the one that you just didn't know, have any idea about when you first entered this video? Always curious to know your thoughts on what's been going on with iOS 26 and 26.1 and 26.2 should be coming around the corner for everybody to try out. And even that one has a few extra features that a lot of people should know about as well. So stay tuned because we will have a video covering all those new features and changes. But what's nice about this new era of iOS is that Apple's kind of opened up the book a little bit in terms of what can be done, what kind of customizations, what kind of audio defaults we have, video defaults we have, being able to then use the file system a little bit more traditionally, and USB-C of course unlocks a bunch of things that we got with the iPhone 15 series and newer. But like I said, that'll do it for this video. If you did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin so I know that you made it to the end. And if you want to watch more videos like this one, definitely check out one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace. Also, let me know what kind of deals you got on the Cyber Monday, Black Friday stuff. Always curious to know. Peace, everybody.